everybody, I am Jared Clark with Air Guns of Arizona. This gun in front of me today is a new offering from Caliber Gun. This gun is called the Cricket 2 Tactical. This gun is incredibly accurate, it has a lot of power potential, and it is made very, very well. So dependency, accuracy, longevity, this gun has it all. So what we're gonna do today is show you exactly how it would come out of the box. We're gonna shoot it for numbers, for consistency, for accuracy, for power. We're gonna do the whole thing under the microscope at 20, take it out for 50 for accuracy, and then meet back here, tie a bow on the whole thing for you. So I hope you stick around, and I hope you really enjoy this video. In front of me is the Cricket 2 Tactical, just as you would receive it out of the box. So we're gonna open it up, we're gonna highlight everything that comes with it and what you could expect to see. There is, when we get the gun, we'll notice that the shroud is not attached. That is because it is the overall length is too big for the box once the shroud is attached on the 60. Um, so the shroud comes bubble wrapped here in the box with it. And then you also will have the owner's manual that will cover in depth um, everything we're talking about, it has a spark schematic. Um, it's actually a pretty good source of information. So anything you need to know about the Cricut 2 is most likely in this book right here. The other thing that comes with each Cricut 2 is this little drawstring black bag. Inside this bag, there's a O-ring reseal kit. There is an extra stock screw. There is a restricting pin. And then there is also a fill device there, your fill probe. So for two magazines also come with the gun. On this one, you'll notice they weren't in the bag they were right in the stock here. So they'll either come directly in the stock already or in this black drawstring bag, but each gun does come with two magazines. What you would do then is the only other thing for assembly out of the box, get the side that has the big circle cut out, goes around the barrel. And once those threads bottom out, make sure it's nice and tight. And there you go. It's ready to rock and roll right now. Magazines are already on board. Put air in it, put a scope on it. You're ready to start shooting. We went ahead and kitted one out. This one in front of me, you can see it is a little bit different. It has these really bright green forest laminate grips. This is one of the stock options that is available on the Cricut 2 Tactical. So if you like what you see, it is available in all the calibers and all the configurations. So these two are identical profiles. The only difference is the laminated parts versus the wood and the synthetic here. And then this one in front of me that I'm holding here, this one they call the Cricut Tactical 2 45. So this is the 45 and this one is the 60. Um, the compact 45 is available in the 177 and 22 calibers. There's some other differences that obviously you can see here. It has a shorter barrel. It has a 17.7 inch barrel. The 177 and the 22 are all going to be CZ barrels. So the small guns here will all use CZ made 17.7 inch barrels. They're about 23 and a half inches in overall length, and they weigh about seven and a half pounds without a scope. So spe spec wise, those are the main differences. The bottle here is also smaller as you can see. This is a 350 cc bottle. And then you have the area back here in front of the reg that is all um, cc's as well. So in total with the bottle and the area back here in this, you have 477 cc's of air. So that is a lot of air in a small package, and it really puts it to use as we're gonna see back at 20 yards. So, and also you can see the difference here in these stocks. The, the size is the same between, even though the gun length is, is drastically more compact, all the grips, if you look closely, all the, the grip, the cheek piece, all of that's the same size. So you could get a small one with the laminate grips. You could get a big one with the wood grips. They also offer an upgraded, if you don't like this black plastic, you can go with a wooden cheek piece here too. They have a lot of different options on the Cricut too. So you really have the ability to customize it and make it yours. But between the wood, the laminate, and then you can upgrade the wood cheek piece, you can really make it however you like it. 
So another great offering on the Cricut 2 here. So we went ahead and decked out the laminate here with some really cool accessories that are not mine. <laughs> I only have access to them, but the Collis here, 10 to 50 scope is really gonna put us on target downrange. Um, and then we went ahead and put an AccuTac FC5 bipod on here. So as you can see, this thing sits really well on a bench. It has an incredible bench presence. As we talked about, it's right above eight pounds without a scope, which to some people might be considered a little heavy, but if you're shooting from a bench, the more weight, the better. It's gonna help with the harmonics. It's gonna help with a lot of the things that come into bench rest shooting. So right out of the box, this one, in my opinion, is a great 100 yard gun. It's got the accuracy behind it. It's got the bench presence to support it. Pick rail up front here for your bipod. You have your adjustable foot back here in the back if you want to use that as a monopod but this gun was designed and built to be ready to shoot on a bench right out of the box in my opinion starting in the back you have a rubber adjustable butt pad this one has some little um knurling on it it's all rubber so it's really comfortable it gives you a nice grip and has a couple contact points here to help any kind of slipping going straight above that you have a knob right here when the gun's not cocked this knob will spin freely this is the hammer spring adjuster. So this is a really cool feature the gun has. The hammer spring, the tension that's put on the hammer that hits your valve is adjustable externally right here. So you can drastically change the power of your gun in about 30 seconds just by cranking on this knob here. And that being said, the gun with a lot more power potential that the Cricut 2 has, this comes into play a lot for fine tuning. You have a, especially in the 30 here, you have a large plenum. It's like a 53 cc plenum, the area behind the reg. So you don't necessarily need spring, hammer spring tension maxed out. We're gonna show you numbers and things like that where it's mostly maxed out just to give you an idea of the most output it can get and how many shots. But there is something to be said about fine tuning the gun and starting with the hammer spring right here and just slowly backing it out until you actually see the drop and then putting it back up to where it was before the drop. So you know you're getting as much velocity as possible without using excess air. And this dial right here makes that a breeze. It's a very simple process to do right out of the box. Get your gun, get a chronograph and you can start tuning it right there. So the hammer spring dial here is directly connected to the breech block. This is your main breech block right here. And if I go on the side here, um, this right here is what we'll call the actuating lever. I'm sure it might have a more technical name, but we're gonna call it the actuating lever. And what it does is it controls everything with the magazine is controlled by this. So if I wanna take out the magazine, obviously I have to open the bolt, but now it still doesn't fall out. You have to get your actuator lever and you have to get it in the backmost position here. So you pull it up and then you pull it all the way back. And now that it's back, it has a lock position and now the magazine will fall right out. So vice versa, when I wanna put the magazine in, I hold it in from both sides. I just push up right here and the spring will wanna fall forward. So right now it's in, but you have to notice there's two positions. Right now it's in, but it's not gonna actuate the magazine. If I wanna use the magazine as an actuated magazine, I just need to push it forward and down. So now I'm in the forward and down position. The magazine will rotate every time I cycle that bolt, as you can see. But if I wanna, for some reason, make sure that doesn't happen, if I open it, pull it back, and then put it in the first position here, as I rotate it, magazine is not rotating, you'll see. So you have a magazine lock position, you have a magazine rotate position, and then you have a pull the magazine out position. Once you've started shooting it though, it's something you'll be able to do with a blindfold and it'll come second nature to you. So magazine actuator lock here, and then let's go ahead and just take a look at the magazine since we're here. So we open the bolt, magazine back. So we are doing the 30 caliber, so it has a 10 shot magazine. The 25 calibers have a 12 shot magazine and the 22s have a 14 shot magazine. It's a very, very simple mag. We'll touch on loading it and how it works back on the range more, um, but very simple. Once you get used to this mag actuator, it'll be very easy to use for you. No problems at all there. So we're gonna go straight down from where we're working on right here. And you'll see I have a second magazine right here. This stock has a really cool design feature where you can hold two extra magazines along with the one that's in the chamber. So at any given time on this gun, you can have a total of three magazines on board ready to go into the gun. There's two little ball detents in there that the, the center of your magazine actuator will pop right into. So it keeps it nice and snug. It can't go anywhere, but if you're out in the field and you need 30 shots instead of 10, you got the ability to carry those all on board without having to 
bring another setup or something to carry your magazine. So cool feature from Cricut. They do offer a lot of areas where you can carry mags on the gun, which is really cool and unique to Cricut. So if you're someone that uses your gun in the field, you, you'll, you'll know that that's something that's appreciated. Going straight down on this one here, we have the little mono foot here. What I like the most about it is it prevents any part of this beautiful stock from touching the surface it's on. So when I go to the range or when I go and I need to set my gun down somewhere, I don't necessarily have to have a sandbag or something if I have my bipod and then my monopod here, gun never touches the ground, it's ready to shoot. I don't necessarily shoot with it touching, but I've kind of, and I've been learning that I like this more and more, it gives you a good spot to hold with your hand, put my hand on a sandbag and now I have a lot of quick adjustment that's really solid. So that is an add-on piece as far as I know for the Cricut 2. They may be coming with them in the near future, but it is a very small add-on piece that, that you can use to customize the gun if you want. In the middle of the um, hammer spring adjuster here, I said when it's decocked, you can go ahead and adjust that hammer spring without any problems. Right in the middle of it, there is a cocking indicator too. So when the gun is cocked, this little turkey timer piece that I like to call pops out to let you know it's cocked. So that if you've ever been at the bench, if you've ever had a double load, you'll appreciate this. If you're behind the trigger and you go, have I cocked the gun yet? And you cycle another one and two pellets come out the barrel. This is an indicator that helps prevent that. If you ever have the question, if the rifle's uh, got a pellet in it, if it's cocked and ready to rock and roll, you can just look down. If you see your red little turkey timer dot, you know that the gun is cocked. So if you do open the bolt, you need to take the magazine out before closing it. So right here, the scope is sitting on a Weaver, standard Weaver style rail. It'll work with any of your Picatinny mounts or any of your Weaver mounts. So good universal base for your scope to set on here. Um, we'll go down from there. The cocking lever is right underneath that. This is a side lever. It is very smooth. It's very easy to operate. Um, it sits forward of your action back here. So it's easily done while you're shooting the gun. It was thought out. It was made really well. And this one is very shooter friendly in my opinion. Everything just naturally flows when you're shooting it. There's nothing back here. There's nothing awkward about a compact gun. It is fully ambidextrous too. So with a few screw removals, you can go ahead and switch that to the left side. If you prefer to have the bolt on the left-hand side of the action, that is done in about a minute and a half. And the um, instructions that come with the gun do tell you how to do that. It's a very simple process. This is our air tube. So the bottle connects to the air tube here. So this is all air reservoir. So it's 500 cc's here. Then you have about 113 cc's here, I think. So it's 613 and then you have a 50 53 cc plug-in plenum here. So you can kind of see there's a seam right here. The 30 calibers come with this right out of the box. They need it for the extra power. So they're willing to sacrifice a little bit of your air reservoir size to get you this extra power with the, with the area behind your plenum. This doesn't come standard on the 22s or the 25s, but it can be added. If you want, if you're someone who shoots high power and high power only, you don't really care about shot count, you're just wanting to hot rod a 22 or a 25, you can absolutely purchase this little plug-in plenum. But when you do so, you do have to buy a smaller air cylinder here too, because you're fixed. This size is fixed. You can only work with so much area here. So if you add this plenum, you're obviously gonna have to make this piece a little bit smaller. So you buy two pieces and you can do a plug-in plenum plus a smaller air chamber and you can have your 22 or your 25 pushing out some serious power. So that one's more for the tinkerers out there. If you're someone who just wants to point and shoot, don't even mess with it. But if you're someone who likes to really get in there, there are plug-in plenums available for all of the calibers and that is something that you can add to them. Every Caliber Gun Cricket 2 is regulated straight from the factory. The regulators are internally adjustable, but there is no external gauge or adjustment point for the regulator. The barrel on the 60s here are a 23.6 inch barrel. Um, it does great for accuracy and great for building up the power as we'll see down on the range. But 23.6 inch barrel, the 25 and the 30 calibers utilize a Lothar Walther barrel. And then the 177s and the 22s will be utilizing CZ barrels. So depending on what caliber you get, it will have either a Lothar Walther or a CZ barrel. Unless I told you that, you would have no idea. The guns shoot great regardless of which barrel you have, but the 25 and 30s are Lothar Walther. We're not looking directly at the barrel here. This is a shroud and it is a threaded on shroud. So if you thread that off, you can take a look directly at your barrel there. There's the 23.6 Lothar Walter barrel. The shrouds actually do a pretty surprisingly good job for how much power it is. Um, so it's pretty mild right out of the box here. But if you do shoot somewhere where you need every little bit, the end of the shroud is a half inch thread now. So accessories, zero dBs, 
Tridents, Donny FLs, whatever you prefer, it'll go right on the end there without any problems. This is a front weaver accessory rail as well. I have the um, AccuTac bipod connected to it, but you could do whatever your imagination wants with that. Anything that runs on a, a weaver Picatinny style accessory will fit there. Um, so bipods, lights, monopods, tripod adapters, go nuts. The gun is accurate to justify any of it. So that one gives you a good accessory rail that you most likely will utilize on this gun. Right here behind the bottle, this is your uh, pressure gauge. It'll tell you how much pressure you have in your system right here. Um, and this gun can be filled all the way up to 300 bar, which is 4,350 PSI. So you can carry a lot of pressure on board and it's listed in bar. It goes 100, 200, 300. 300 is your max fill on this one. On the side opposite of the gauge here, we have a little rubber, this is just a dust plug. It goes in where your probe, your fill probe, will go right in there, and that is how you charge the air. This gun has a built-in flow restrictor, so it'll take it a while on your first fill. Um, it takes probably about a minute and a half, which is good. It, it, for us impatient people, it's not, but it keeps the air from ever getting too hot. It makes the air go in much calmer, slower, and you get a much more accurate fill that way. Just be aware, if you're filling it for the first time and it doesn't look like the needle's moving, let it sit for about 30 seconds and you'll see it's, 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 it's restricting it and it's for your own good. You're welcome. Be patient. Um, <laughs> you have a manual safety right here on top of your trigger. It's very straightforward when this is um, pushed in, it's in safe. When it's pushed out, it's in fire and they give you a, a cool little diagram on both sides and they flip it for you just in case you get confused. So it tells you which is which, one is safe, one is fire. The trigger right here is fully adjustable. It is a linkage, so you do have to, it's not a traditional two-stage trigger, but that being said, it is very crisp. It leaves nothing to be desired. Again, if you're a big tinkerer, you might go in there and, and play with some of the adjustments, but as they come right out of the box, it is, is more than enough for me in terms of good, clean, trigger release. Right below that, we, we talked about the grips, but you have your laminate pistol grip here. I like the pistol grip look of it. It, it kind of makes it look tactical and gives it an aggressive bench stance in my opinion. So I've always liked pistol grips. Uh, a traditional rifle's cool. The pistol grip tactical look is re really cool. So it, it's one of those to each their own. I really like it. I really like the trigger guard here that's made out of metal. Big fan of metal tr trigger guards and I like the design where it leaves that gap. I just think they did a great job. Uh, aesthetically, this gun is very pleasing to me. I, I think it does a great job of combining tactical and classic and gives you one that kind of meets in the middle on a happy medium. So everything about the Cricket 2 that I've looked at so far has been a winner for me. We're gonna go shoot it at 20 yards, so I think you'll start to come around and see what I'm talking about when we're talking about shot count and power potential and things like that. But overall, on paper, it's a winner. I really like it under the microscope here, and I think you would too if you put your hands on it. So I think that covers everything the gun has in terms of features that we want to look at in here. So what we're going to go do is put air in the gun. I'll meet you at 20 yards. We'll do some numbers for velocity. We'll do some shot counts. We'll do some rough accuracy at 20, and then we'll take it out to 50 for our five shot group at 50 yards. Hope you stick around for that. We're going to get after it and we're going to go put some air in the gun. Let's go. Okay, so we have 300 bar in the Cricket 2 Tactical. I'm gonna be loading the JSB Exact 30 44.75 grain pellets. Um, both pellets shot really good in the gun. These proved just to, to be a tad bit more repeatable, it seemed like, um, but both pellets shot great. So quickly, when it comes to loading this magazine, it's very simple. You'll see that one side of the magazine is nice and flat. The other side has some teeth right in the center. Those are the actuating teeth, and they need to point back towards you. So when you load the mag, the teeth point back towards you, and you just simply put the pellet in nose first, and you push it a little bit, it'll get it up and over this O-ring. That's, um, that's what holds the head of the pellet in. So you just do this 10 times. Very simple process. And then once your 10th one's in, You'll notice the O-ring prevents them from falling back out. You have a magazine that's now ready to be put in the gun. Very simple to use, very simple to operate, very simple to carry with you. So we've got 10 in the mag. We're gonna shoot a group size down at 20 yards. This should give us a rough indicator for accuracy. Um, and then we'll take that rough indicator and move it out to 50 and really stretch the limits a little bit. So let's get the magazine loaded and let's get a group size. Okay, so there is 10, all from the magazine. 
all in the 10X circle there. That's not much bigger than 130 caliber hole. Um, so I'm thrilled with that. Out of the 20 yards, 44 grains give you everything you could want. It gives me a great indicator that we should be pretty impressed at 50 yards as well. We're gonna be shooting the JSB 50 grain pellets to calculate the number of shots we'll get per fill. So we put 300 bar in it. We'll calculate the velocity with the chronograph, but then we'll tell you what kind of foot pounds and how many shots per charge you will be getting at that. So let's start this shot count. So we did the full shot count off of a 300 bar fill for the Cricut 2 Tactical in 30 cal and impressive to say the least. I got a total of 45 shots at an average of 912 feet per second with a 50 grain uh, JSB. So if you calculate that out, that's 92 and a half foot pounds of energy. So right out of the box at the max power setting, this gun is doing 92 and a half foot pounds and it's doing it for 45 shots per fill. So anyone that's relatively familiar like we said earlier goes wow that's a lot of shots and a lot of power usually you have to sacrifice one or the other but due to the big plenum here the big air reservoir you get the best of both worlds in the 30 cal so also if you were to go in and tune that down to like 88 foot pounds 87 somewhere in there using the hammer spring i bet you would get closer to 60 65 shots per fill so what i'm telling you is the maximum velocity available and how many shots you can if you're hot rodding it so 92 and a half foot pounds 45 shots that's really impressive for the 30 caliber Cricket 2 Tactical in the 25 caliber. We went ahead and ran a 300 bar fill. We're shooting the 33.9 grain King Heavy Mark II pellets. And this one was another one that really impressed us. I got 115 shots off of a 300 bar fill and my average was 867 feet per second. So if you crunch those numbers, that's 56 and a half foot pounds. So if you're running this one on max setting, 56 foot pounds, 115 shots. And I'll also just point out on this one, the standard deviation was five. On the 30 cal, the standard deviation was two. So it's huge shot counts and all very, very consistently in a tight window. So the spreads are good, the count is good, the, the power is good. The only other one available in the 60 is the 22. So in 22 caliber, I got 127 shots off of a 300 bar fill and that average velocity was 920 feet per second with the monster redesign. So that's a 25.39 grain pellet. Average foot pounds is 47.7 foot pounds of energy. So that is a hard hitting 22 caliber that will give you a lot of shots behind it. So the 30s in the full length configuration, we can see are heavy hitters and we can see that they get good amount of shots with it. So I keep harping on it, but I'm gonna say it one more time. Usually it's a sacrifice. Usually it's a give and take. You can get a short gun, but you're not gonna get a lot of power. You can get a short gun with a lot of power, but only a few shots per fill. Not the case with this one. You get all three and it does it incredibly accurate. All right, so we went ahead and swapped out for the uh, Cricut 2 Tactical 45, the compact version, because we're gonna cover all of our bases here. And we put 300 bar in this gun and we're gonna be shooting the 25.39 grain Monsters, um, nice heavy pellet to give us a good idea of both energy capabilities and shot count capabilities. So magazines loaded with those. We're gonna get a full shot count going for you and we'll let you know the results. So I had a total of 90 shots off of a 300 bar fill. So this is a relatively small gun, but it gets 90 shots per fill. And here's the most important, most impressive part in my opinion, it's doing 844 feet per second on average with the 25.39. So if you calculate that out, that's 40 foot pounds of energy. So for a 22 caliber, 40 foot pounds is not mild or medium power even. That's high power for a 22. So you're getting a compact, high power, high shot count gun in this, and it's accurate, laser beam accurate, crisp when it goes off, lots of enjoyable things about the Cricut 2 Tactical. So I personally am blown away with these numbers across the board. Between the 60 and the 45, this is an efficient regulator doing every bit it can with the air that's on board. Um, you see it with the consistencies being so tight and you see it with the massive amounts of shots you get per fill. So thrilled with this, happy with 20 yards. Let's move it out to 50 and let's see if we can hold together a tight group of 50 yards. Okay, so we're out here at the 50 yard range. We're gonna do our five shot group at 50 yards. Uh, again, we're gonna be shooting the JSB 30 
44.7 grains. Um, again, the 50 shot really well. The 44s just tended to be a little bit tighter grouping during testing. So we've loaded the mag. I have my target set. So we're gonna put together a five shot group and see what kind of accuracy we can hold together. All right, so there is five down there. It looks pretty good from here. Let's get a closer look at it. I got four pretty much in that same hole right there. I mean, that's what I was just saying. If, that, if it weren't for that first shot, and that could have been me, could have been the gun, but that is still, I mean, a great group at 50 yards. It's hitting really hard. It completely, this is a one inch coin, completely goes away. I mean, it'd probably cover half of it. It's closer to half inch but just great repeatability. It hits this trap so hard. So anything from hunting to small pest elimination, you got the accuracy and you got the power to do it. No doubt about that. Let's go back into the showroom. Let's wrap this video up. All right, so that is the Cricut 2 Tactical in a nutshell. I really enjoyed making this video. We saw that in the 30 caliber here, we we're getting 90 plus foot pounds, 45 shots per fill, all in a package that's less than 35 inches. So I think that description, those three things alone pretty much tie it up. And if you know pre-charged air guns, you go, wow, that is impressive. So the ability to combine overall length, power, accuracy, shot count, it's really what makes this gun special. Um, this gun, in my opinion, truly punches outside of its weight class in terms of price point and competes with a lot of more expensive offerings from Europe and does it really, really well, in my opinion. So great job, Caliber Gun. I, I thoroughly enjoyed doing the Cricut Tactical review and I look forward to doing more Caliber Gun products in the future. So if you liked this video, please give us a like, comment, subscribe, do the whole thing. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube, join our mailing list on airgunsofarizona.com. Any way that you can follow us, we would appreciate you doing so. I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you come back for the next one. Thanks a lot.